<sighs> What's going on guys? Alex from here coming at you with another YouTube video. Just finished my workout. Felt really good. It was a good one. That's why my hair is all messed up so I look like this. But coming at you with another YouTube video. Today's video is going to be on cutting. How to cut, how to lose fat the right way. I'm currently about to start my cut. I've technically been doing it the last week, but I'm going to kind of take you step by step and go over certain topics like carb cycling, uh, refeeds, reverse dieting, uh, what kind of foods you should be eating, what kind of cardio you should be doing, if your training should change, and just basically how I cut. And uh, you can try to implement that as well and try it out yourself. Who was texting me? That's my girl. Uh. <laughs> All right, so I'll pop up some workout clips, stuff like that, so you can be entertained while I go over and talk about a few of these topics. But we're going to go over a few topics here. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is a caloric deficit. Now, that is going to be the most crucial and most important thing when it comes to trying to lose body fat because if you're not in a caloric deficit, you're not going to lose weight. You can eat literally vegetables and fruits and, and just lean chicken all damn day, but if you're still in a surplus or you're not in a deficit, you're going to not lose any fat. So basically what a caloric deficit is, we all have a maintenance level of calories. It's called, it's called your total daily expenditure, basically uh, your TDE. All right, so basically what your total daily expenditure is, is how many calories you burn in a day. So this is going to be what your maintenance level of calories is. So as a relatively active person, I've been training for about four years, my maintenance calories is around 2,700 calories. Meaning if I was to eat 2,700 calories, do my regular workout routines, my re regular daily activities, I would burn about 2,700 calories in that whole day. And I was, if I was to eat 2,700 calories, I would not gain any weight. I wouldn't gain weight. I wouldn't lose weight. I'll stay around the same weight, especially for training for four years. It's different for newbie gains. So like that, we're not going to even get into that. Um, so basically, if you want to gain muscle, you would eat in a surplus, meaning I would eat about 3,000 calories, therefore giving my body extra fuel to build muscle. And if I wanted to lose weight, meaning losing fat, you're going to eat under that. So I eat around 2,400. When I get deep into a cut, I'll go to 2,200 calories to make sure that my body is not getting that uh, extra fuel. So therefore, it has to take away from my fat in order to get that. And that's how you burn fats, being in that deficit. To find out what your daily expenditure is, there's a lot of calculators that you can try out online. And what I recommend doing is use one of those calculators, find the number, what it gives you, and try eating at that number of calories for about three days. Track your weight every morning, right after you go to the bathroom, write it down in a book. See how your weight changes eating at that calorie number. If your weight's staying the same, good, you found your maintenance calories. If it's not, if it's going up, that means you have to lower that, that calorie number. If it's going down too, fa too fast, you can increase it a little bit. Find your maintenance calories, that's the most important thing. Once you find your maintenance calories, you wanna go into a caloric deficit. I like doing around a 300 calorie deficit. So me, my 2700 uh, maintenance calories, I'm gonna eat around 2400 calories to start off with my cut. Now, if you are a person who loves doing a lot of cardio and stuff like that, you can actually not have, you don't have to do as much of an eating deficit because you're kind of making up for it and the extra cardio, you're burning more calories. Cardio does not burn fat, it burns calories, which is going to help put you into that deficit. That's why I recommend doing cardio because it's going to kind of allow you to eat a little bit more food and I feel like it just speeds up the process overall. So again, I recommend eating anywhere from like a 300 to 500 calorie deficit. Don't go too much into a deficit though because then you can crash your metabolism so it's making it harder for you to lose fat in the long run. And you can also mess up your hormones and also you can lose muscle that way. We do not want to lose our muscle especially as a natural lifter you don't want to go in too big of a deficit because you can risk that muscle loss now what i recommend for like trying to keep as mus much muscle as possible is uh, limit your deficit as much as possible the slower you know the slower you're losing the weight the better it means you're losing less muscle over time you might lose a little bit of size how it works for a lot of natural lifters highly recommend check, uh, taking bcas essential amino acids hmb is another good supplement these are supplements that are gonna, it's, uh, they're anti-catabolic meaning they're help you hold on to muscle tissue especially when you're in a uh, caloric deficit state when you're in a catabolic state it's going to help hold on to that muscle tissue a little bit better. As well as having a high protein diet, I recommend having one gram per pound of body weight. I do a little bit more than one gram. It's just because I have a high protein diet, especially when I'm cutting. And it's going to help you hold on to a little bit more of that muscle. So the second thing we're going to be going over is the type of cardio you should be doing. Now me, I'm a big fan of low intensity steady state cardio. There's a difference. Low intensity steady state cardio versus high intensity interval training. Those are the two most popular sources of cardio. So High intensity, high intensity interval training, you don't have to kind of go as long. It's more erratic sprints and stuff like that. High pace and swap followed by like a slow pace. Um, I don't like doing those because I feel like it takes too much energy, right? And if you're already going to be working out on top of that, it can kind of mess your workout stuff. So that's why I like low intensity steady state. You're at a slow pace. It's good for your heart rate. And I like doing fasted cardio off of it. So for me, I do fasted cardio every morning when I'm in a cut. Depending on how deep I am in the cut, we'll, we'll kind of say how long I go for that cardio session. So in the beginning of my cut, I'll do fasted cardio for about 10 to 15 minutes almost every day of the week. When I get deep into my cut, when I'm getting really lean towards like maybe six to seven weeks into it, I'll start doing 25 to 30 minutes every morning. 
And uh, before my fasted cardio, I take a fat burner as well as I take uh, L-carnitine. So I'll show you real quick what I do. So the fat burner I take is by Rise. It's high stimulant based, so it's gonna kind of increase your energy production. Uh, it'll burn more calories throughout the day. Also, it's gonna help us kind of shuttle those uh, fat cells into the bloodstream that uses energy. And then I also say carnitine, which is really good at doing that. This is carnitine right here. Uh, I drink this and this before I do my fasted cardio. It's gonna allow your body to kind of help its metabolism and to utilize your fat cells more as a primary source of energy rather than going to like your muscle or carbohydrates and stuff like glycogen and stuff like that. So, highly recommend doing that. These aren't necessary, you don't have to. A fat burner is not like a magic pill, but it's to help aid you when you're already in a caloric deficit and eating the right way. All right, so while I do my cardio in the morning, I like to sip on amino acids just so I can fuel my body with amino so that it doesn't really target my muscles to take away when I'm doing that cardio session. So I highly recommend getting yourself like an amino acid supplement. I take these when I work out and when I do my cardio, mix the EAAs and BCAAs. Um, but yeah. My favorite choice of cardio is doing an incline uh, treadmill. I do about a uh, 13 degree incline for about three miles per hour. And again, 10 minutes to 30 minutes, depends how far I'm into the cut. And also, I just try to make sure I'm living a more active lifestyle. If you can track your steps, try to make sure that you're getting 10,000 steps a day. Uh, you can include your cardio, your walking with that. Try to hit 10K steps a day. Be a little bit more active when you're trying to get into a caloric deficit because it's just going to help overall and help you burn more fat and more calories throughout the day. Third thing is going to be your training style. Like, should you train differently when you're cutting and when you're bulking? And I, I believe some people don't, but I kind of believe you kind of have to. For me, I like to make sure that you're hitting each muscle twice a week because you need to make sure your body knows that it still needs to kind of try to keep that muscle. So I think that hitting it a little bit more often rather than once a week is going to kind of signal your body that, yeah, hey, like you still need this muscle. You're still working it twice a week. So I like doing like a push-pull leg split or push-pull leg Arnold split variation. That's what I like to do a lot. And instead of really focusing on uh, like a ton of heavy movements, I always start off with a heavy movement, but then like I'll, the rest of the workout, I'll do a lot more tempo training. I'll do time and retention, slow my reps down, do a lot more kind of volume based stuff. And I'll make sure my last set, I always go like to ultimate failure, just to make sure that my muscle still kind of stays there and like signals my brain that I still need it when I'm in that caloric deficit state. The thing about being in a caloric deficit, especially when you get deeper into the cut, is you're not gonna have as much energy. Your pump is not gonna be as good because your carb is gonna be a little bit lower. Uh, you may feel, you look a little bit flatter, especially being a, a natural athlete. So that is gonna be an issue. That's why I recommend taking a good pre-workout because if you have that extra stimulant-based pre-workout, first it's gonna act as a little mini fat burner because of the stimulants, and it's also gonna give you that extra energy, the pump products that you need to be able to have a good workout. Because when you're in that deficit for a long period of time, the workouts can start to suck. So make sure you have a good pump supplement, a good pre-workout supplement, and you'll be fine. I oh, hope this lighting is good. Now real quick, we're gonna talk about a little bit more advanced things like carb cycling and refeeds. So, so basically all you really need to get into a good body fat percentage is that caloric deficit. You can get to like 10, 11% pretty easily by doing just that regular 300 calorie caloric deficit with some cardio. Now, if you kind of want to bring it to that next level of like getting shredded, shredded, you might need to incorporate carb cycling and stuff like that. Um, it's really been shown to help people get really damn shredded. So uh, I'm not a big fan of doing it the way some people do like a high day, a medium day, a low day, no carb day. That is if you really want to get shredded. That's like competition stuff. I personally don't do that because it's kind of unhealthy at times and it's hard to sustain that. So for me, what I do is um, I'll keep doing my deficit stuff like that. Once I start getting pretty lean, I'll incorporate a refeed day. What a refeed day is once a week, I'll pick a day, maybe like a Sunday where I am planning to eat about 300 calories above my uh, my maintenance, so I'll be in a surplus. So if I'm usually eating 2,400 on a cut for that day, I'll eat around 3,000 calories for that one day. And those extra calories will come primarily from carbohydrate sources. Now this is to help increase your leptin levels, to help you kind of satiate you a little bit more, uh, help your pump, kind of help your uh, metabolism fire back up because you got more calories coming in. Um, just kind of help reset you, keep you going. Plus it's kind of like a good mental thing because you kind of look forward to that day of the week because you will be hungry a lot of the times in your cut. And I'll also go over some tips to help you with that but um brief feeds i highly recommend um plus the day after make sure you're, you're having a really good workout because you'll have a better pump so make sure it's a lot of high intensity stuff um but yeah so that's what a refeed is pick one day of the week it's kind of like a cheat day or cheat meal uh so like i do like a bu i go to the diner and i get like a big thing of french toast that's like my go-to refeed meal or i'll get donuts that's <laughs> just how i am i have a sweet tooth like crazy especially in the cut now when it comes to like trying to be okay and satiated in the cut it's like the tips for like not being hungry all the time Drink a full glass of water before every meal. If you struggle with like being hungry all the time, full glass of water before every meal. I want you to do that. Try different uh, appetite suppressants. Um, I forgot what it's like. It's go Himbi, Yohimbine, I think is appetite suppressant. I haven't personally tried that, but I've heard about it. 
Uh, also, like black coffee has been shown to help as an appetite suppressant, like caffeine and stuff like that. A little tip that I like to do is I'll get a whole thing of baby spinach and uh, really low calorie dressing. And like just between meals, if I feel hungry, I'll just have a whole bowl of salad, just straight up salad. It's low calorie, it'll help fill you up a little bit with the fiber and stuff like that as well as um, I try chewing gum uh, after every meal. So like once I like eat, ate my meal, even if I'm not like full all the way, I'll pop a stick of gum in my mouth and just chew it and it kind of helps your appetite a little bit. All right, so when it comes to the type of foods you should be eating, obviously you should be eating healthier. You shouldn't be snacking on Cheez-Its. And the reason like that is a thing is because those things are higher in calories, meaning it's gonna be harder to put you in a deficit when you incorporate those higher calorie foods. So for me, like I like to eat whole foods. So the carb sources, Mainly, I'd say like oats, like cream of wheat, potatoes, like this is my go-to. Uh, protein sources, I eat any type of protein really. Fish, salmon, like cod, chicken, turkey, ground turkey. I do a higher uh, or a lower fat percentage, like 99% lean turkey, ground turkey or beef. Um, yeah, that's the like main protein sources. Eggs, of course, a lot of egg whites. And um, yeah, uh, fat sources, avocados, peanuts, almonds, peanut butter. And uh, again, like that fattier fish, like salmon and stuff like that would be great for you. Um, but yeah, don't try to overcomplicate it. When you go to the grocery store, if you stay on the perimeter of the grocery store, it's usually where you're gonna get those whole foods. Don't snack on things. If you need snack though, that uh, Skinny Pop. Skinny Pop is great <laughs> when, you're in a, when you're in a cut because it's low calorie and it's got a lot of fiber in it. It's gonna help fill you up a little bit more. But yeah, that's it for today's YouTube video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. And if you did, please leave a like. Comment down below what else you want me to make videos on, what you want me to see, because I'm doing a lot more videos now, especially with going out to the Swole House here soon. So let me know down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn that bell notification on. I'm uploading around three times per week right now. So uh, really trying to push out content, especially once we get to the Swole House. Got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of stuff coming. Again, if you want to use any of my codes when it comes to you know supporting me, my supplement company that I'm with is Rise. Use code Alex for 15% off. Raw Gear is the clothing company. I got all the shorts right now. I don't think see them. But use code Alex for 10% off Raw Gear. So thank you guys for all the love and support. You guys are absolutely amazing. I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless each and every one of you.